Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And on today's video, we're we'll taking a look at Corsair's classic power supply. This is the TX850M. I'm going to give you a few reasons why you should buy it, and also a few reasons why you shouldn't. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Corsair's TX850M semi modular power supply. This is an absolute classic of a power supply. It's been around actually on the market for quite a long time. They have revised it as well. So originally this version was actually a bronze rated unit. Although as obviously as things progress and technology improves, it now is certified for 80 plus gold rated. So we're looking at somewhere around about 85% efficiency at most levels, although peaking into the 90s in certain types of loads. Obviously most of these power supplies with 80 plus ratings, it's kind of generally around the sort of 50 to maybe 70% mark is where they're at their peak efficiency. There will be some links in the video description, so if you want to check out the stats actually from the company themselves to actually do the ratings of this, then that will be in the video description below, so you can check all that out. Essentially, this is offering kind of great value for money. It's also clearly Corsair brand name, even if it was slightly inferior to other brands on the market, because it's got the Corsair brand name on there, people are going to buy it regardless. And the reason behind that is because of the warranty. So this comes with a seven year warranty, which is pretty darn good for a power supply of this sort of rating. And also Corsair's kind of support system is semi-legendary in the, uh, the community of PC builders, enthusiasts, and even novices. So if you do get any problems with it, chances are it's gonna get sourced out very, very quickly. Obviously, if you do buy it from Amazon, which I suggest you do from the affiliated links in the video description, you can pick this up at the moment for somewhere in the region about 80 pounds which for an 850 watt power supply with a gold rating on it and a seven year warranty, I think is really good. But we'll talk about that later. And that is potentially one of the reasons why you actually shouldn't buy this power supply because of its close relation to its bigger brother, the RM850. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So we're gonna go through, do an unboxing, see what we actually get, go through the specs, see what the cable lengths are like, all that kind of good stuff. Basically drilling through what is on the box. I'm not a hardware engineer as such. I don't have the facilities to actually test this, although many, many companies have, and obviously 80 plus themselves have done it. So you can check out all the information there. Essentially, it's just a really good power supply overall. You've got some pretty tight voltage regulation on there. You've got all the usual standards and features such as over voltage protection, under voltage protection. Uh, the overpower protection is actually really good on this. Some of the actual tests I've seen on this have seen it reach up to a thousand watts uh, and basically not cook itself, which I think is uh, pretty good. So in the modern era of the 30 and potentially 40 series graphics cards from Nvidia, which are known to spike voltages pretty heavily, then if you're thinking of maybe getting a power supply to have a little bit of future proof in, then this is actually a good idea, especially heading up towards the 850 watt mark. So taking a look at the packaging, uh, as you can see Corsair, usual packaging with their kind of themed yellow on there. TXM series, the TXM series is basically kind of like a budget range. So RM is kind of like the high end. The TX is kind of like their value, a version of it effectively. You've got a few less things on here, which is another reason why later on I'll be showing you a reason why you possibly shouldn't buy this. Uh, but for most people, I think this is gonna be absolutely fine, depending on the type of system you're building and also what connections you need to use. And again, we'll be going through those so you can see exactly what connections are included in the box. And also there are options so you can actually add on to this because this is a semi-modular power supply. If you want to, if there's a cable that you don't particularly like or you want to change, you can swap them out. Companies like Cable Mods, etc., will do replacement cables which will go directly into this power supply. So you've got no problems there. And also if there's a cable that you actually want that isn't included, which there is one, one in particular, then again, you can buy those separately. It is going to add to the cost, in which case maybe you're better off looking at the RM version. But yeah, anyway, I digress. So looking on the side of the box goes through again some more of the specifications there. So you've got 80 plus gold, as we've already said numerous times. 100% uh, all Japanese 105C capacitors. Now that's actually pretty important. You do find with a lot of, especially the gold power supplies and even some of the silvers, they generally will say they use 105C capacitors. Now 105C capacitors aren't all built the same. There's various different brands and qualities, etc, etc. Generally, the Japanese ones tend to be favorable, especially some of the ones such as Rubicon. I believe those are held in very high esteem. Um, if it says 105C capacitors and it doesn't state where they're actually from, there's a strong chance they're gonna be some of the kind of the Chinese alternatives. Although those aren't entirely bad, 
but the Japanese ones do in general tend to be better. You also got a thermostatically controlled fan for low noise. And actually I've done some very, very basic testing with this already today, just hooking it up. And even on the idle speeds, the fan is basically, well, it's inaudible. And even if you had an entirely passive PC, I think actually still you'd struggle to hear the fans over just normal ambient noise. It is extremely quiet. Also as well on there, it does mention superior voltage regulation and long-term reliability. And obviously, like I said, they back that up with a seven year warranty. On the back of the box goes into even more detail. Uh, you've got some graphs there showing you the efficiency rates. Again, if you want to, you can download this from the link in the video description, take a look at it for yourself. Um, or even if you want to, you can print it out as I've done just to get some references for the different voltages, etc. Uh, talks about the actual outputs there. So realistically, you're looking at on the 12 volt rail, 70 amps, just over 70 amps, which does equate to right about 850 watts. Again, it's all totaled up there so you can see where that all comes from. So you've got uh, decent outputs on the 3.5 and also on the 5 volt rail, although those these days are slightly less important. Certainly there are still our components which will use that. Uh, M.2 drives, SSDs, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, it is worth paying attention to those as well, but the real important one really is your 12 volt rail. On the top of the box, it goes through the connection. So this actually could probably save me doing the rest of the video to be fair, but we will take a look at the cables anyway. So you've got your standard 24 pin power connection on the top there. Uh, that is your main one plugging into your motherboard. You've only got a single EPS connection. So this is one of the reasons why potentially you shouldn't buy this power supply. Now for most people and uh, for the majority of builders, a single eight pin EPS connection is gonna be absolutely fine. And it's gonna deliver the motherboard and the CPU more than enough power. But as things move on, potentially we are looking with more and more motherboards these days coming with either two eight pin connections or a eight plus a four, then definitely having the ability to actually use a different one is gonna be favorable. And especially when you're looking at this sort of wattage, around about 850 watts, you are looking at the sort of more upper tier or more premium builds. For a 550 watt or a 650 watt power supply, having just a single EPS connector, I think is absolutely fine. But when you start creeping up 750s, 850s and into a thousand watts, I think having two is something that you should actually have as standard in the box. Now you can actually buy that as a separate thing. There is a connection on the back of the power supply, which you can plug an additional connection into. So don't worry, it's not like you're locked into it. And of course, if you want to, if you want to go kind of old school on it, you can always use the Molex connectors and connect up a kind of additional cable on there. That is a potential, but it would have been nice to have seen it actually in the box to begin with. Moving across, we've got a PCI Express connection. So this is for your graphics cards. Those are the traditional ones. So you've got an eight pin connection, which is split into a block of six plus two. There are four of those in total spread across two cables. So each cable has two outputs on it. For the purists, you may want to use uh, one cable per connection on your graphics card. Again, okay, that is possibly better. Although realistically, a lot of people are just daisy chaining across. Okay. Potentially you could do an SLI configuration if you want to, if you did need to. Obviously watch out for the voltages that you need for those graphics cards. You've got eight SATA connections on there, so plenty of SATA connections for powering things like SATA hubs, RGB hubs, fan hubs, all that kind of stuff. Obviously SATA drives as well, so if you're planning on doing some sort of video editing build and you've got some SATA storage, then you're gonna have no issues there at all. Oddly as well, there are eight Molex connectors. So I guess that is where the TX850M is starting to show its age a little bit now. I don't know the last time really that I used more than one Molex connector without having to use eight, which seems a little bit over the top. I would have much preferred to have seen maybe a SATA to Molex adapter included in the box, ditch those two cables entirely, and maybe get an extra EPS connector or maybe even a different PCI Express cable. That for me would have been preferable. Do we really need eight Molex connectors in this day and age? I don't think so. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, something else which we don't really need, but is kind of handy sometimes. This is the old school floppy drive style connector. So you get two of those included in the box for some bizarre reason. Um, I do know that some water pump and some kind of uh, custom cooling solutions do use those, as do some custom USB 3 adding cards, PCI Express ones. You do see them every now and then, but it's uh, more of a rarity than the norm. Again, I think with the Molex and the floppy connectors, it would have been great to have just ditched those all together, throw in another EPS connection, I think that would have served people much better. Anyway, that's enough about the packaging and the cables. Let's take a look at the actual thing. 
So this is everything that we get in the box. So I'll quickly go through what we get. So there is some cable ties for cable management. Always nice to see those. And also some screws to attach the power supply into your case. You get some important information. Um, it's not really important information. It's essentially just about the warranty guide done in possibly the smallest print I've ever seen. So if you're over maybe 25, chances are you're not gonna be able to read that anyway. Also, there is a instruction guide or instruction manual, and this covers the 550, the 650, 750, and the 850 models. Essentially, they're all pretty much the same in terms of kind of specs, obviously different power outputs, and some of them actually do get slightly different cable setups. And it goes through and tells you the exact lengths, all that kind of stuff. If you want to see more of this, you can actually download the manual from the Corsair site. I'll try and link that in the video description as well, should you be interested. So let's take a look at the cables now. Obviously you're gonna get a power lead, uh, which isn't always a given on power supplies these days. I've received quite a few power supplies these days which actually don't come with one at all. So this is a UK style one, 13 amp plug, with also the traditional kind of kettle lead style. Obviously if you buy it in a different region, then you'll get one appropriate for your location. So let's move on to the rest of the cables. So like I said before, we get these uh, two floppy adapters. So that's Molex to a floppy style connector. Yeah, two of them in there. One is probably more than enough. Two is uh, kind of wasteful in my opinion. Next, we've got the Molex connections. So there are two cables, each of which has got four connections on. I'll put the links of the cables in the description below so you can see that and also you're probably seeing it popping up anyway. So I actually really like these ones. The way that they actually work, you push in and they just release nice and easy. That's something that Corsair and obviously other manufacturers do quite well but I do like that kind of spring-loaded section which kind of pushes them apart, which makes uh, assembly and disassembly much easier. Next, we've got our SATA connections, as we said, so there's eight of those. That's actually pretty handy. Again, probably most people will get away with just one cable, but there is two cables included, should you wish to. Each cable with four connections. Next one is gonna be our PCIe connections. So this is for your graphics card. These are actually really nice cables and are actually really quite chunky as well. So. They're kind of expecting you to be drawing a lot of wattage through them, so you're not gonna kind of melt in the first instance. Nice cables, uh, flat, obviously, nice and easy for cable management. They look pretty cool. You do get two of these included, actually, in the packaging. And like I said, you've got the six pin plus two, which you can just snap together, and then that makes it eight pin. Daisy chain as well, so there is another one coming off, which gives you about another kind of six or seven centimeters, so you can put it into a a slot next to each other on a graphics card easily or potentially in some kind of SLI configuration should you for some reason want to do that these days which I strongly advise not to because it's just horrible these days. Anyway so yeah you get two of those included which is always nice to see. So now we're going to take a look at the cables which are actually physically connected to the power supply. So again this is one of the potential downsides. I know there's going to be somebody in the comments which is going to be like well I prefer the RM series because it's fully modular. I kind of agree with you, although realistically, if you're using a power supply like this in a PC, it's pretty much a given that you have to use the 24 pin power connection. And unless the motherboard's really, really super old, then you are gonna have to use a eight pin EPS connector at a very minimum, uh, potentially a four pin, which you can split that across, no problems. So actually having them captive, I personally don't see that as being a big issue. If you're going to be doing some sort of custom build and you're doing custom cabling, etc., then I can definitely see the advantages of being fully modular. But I wouldn't take kind of points away from it in terms of scoring it because it had captive cables for those because they are kind of necessary and you do need them. And also they've been done pretty nicely. Again, they are expecting these to be taking uh, a little bit of a hammering. So they've got some really nice heavy duty gauge cable in there, which is always a nice thing to see. And there's actually a really long length on there. I'll give you the uh, links underneath as you're watching now. And you've got the 24 pin connection. I do like this as well, the way they've done it. So you can use it as a 20 pin should you have a motherboard that needs that. But the fact that the connection actually just attaches to the side and is firmly in place is really good. When you're trying to plug these in, when you've got the ones which aren't fully kind of captive or at least latched on, you kind of push it in and you're looking to see if the extra four pins gone in all the way to the motherboard. And it's just a hassle. Realistically, I think all power supplies these days should be just a standard 24 pin. I think that makes much more sense these days, but you've got the flexibility there and they've actually executed it pretty well. The cabling as well, nicely done, all blacked out cabling. You have got the kind of traditional Corsair sheathing on here and the kind of the bunching up here that you generally do get. 
This is the only thing if you've got a case which is going to have a little bit of a narrow kind of back area for cable management or for passing through the cables from the back to the front through the grommets or uh, cutouts then these can get a little bit out of control at times but yeah certainly decent quality cabling essentially that is what matters. Looking at the power supply itself actually one of the things you'll notice is it's got a decent amount of weight to it which is uh, there's a massive heat sink in there to keep all the components cool. This generally will be running kind of optimally up to and around 40 degrees Celsius, which is kind of normal for most power supplies. Uh, on the side there, you've got the TX850M markings on there. Of course, they're badge on that side, and also you've got on that side, so depending if you mount it with the fan facing down or fan facing up, you're still gonna get your logo on there, so that's really good. On the back, you've got the honeycomb style pass-through for airflow. Honeycomb is always the best way to go. Circular ones are fine, but they don't pass as much air. Honeycomb has got much better airflow path. You've got your AC inlet there, and also there is a particularly nice clicky power button. Always nice to see that, nice quality power button. On the top, you've got the 140 mil fan. So this is designed to be thermally controlled or thermostatically controlled, I think they actually call it. So it isn't a zero kind of uh, dB or a eco fan, so it doesn't turn off entirely. Under low loads, it will be spinning continually. For me personally, I actually prefer that, especially if it's a low noise unit, which this one definitely is. In fact, let's give you some footage now, which I took earlier, of this fan in operation, just in kind of idle mode, and you can listen to see how quiet it actually is. To be fair, you probably won't be able to hear it. So there you go, extremely quiet, uh, definitely, like I said earlier, if you've got a even the most quiet PC with all passive cooling, it's unlikely you're ever going to hear the fan. It's very, very quiet indeed, and certainly that is one of the key selling points, especially if you're um, someone who does video production or maybe you're doing streaming, you just don't want a noisy PC. Taking into consideration the fan in your power supply is always worth doing. This is a fluid dynamic bearing fan as well, so yeah, it is going to be a little bit quieter than sleeve bearings and all that kind of stuff. On the top of the power supply, you've got the badge on there, it tells you all the specifications, etc. Again, we went through that a little bit earlier. And this is the bit which is, I feel, slightly of a bit of a letdown, but it is entirely functional, but it is a little bit of a letdown. So we do have our peripheral and SATA connections there, so there are four of those so potentially you can connect up all of those so if you wanted 16 drives so eight molex drives eight sata drives you can connect those all up at the same time if you uh <laughs> if you couldn't envisage having all that craziness going on you do also have there two connections there the uh, eight pin ones so that's going to be for either pci express or potentially if you wanted to you can use one of these as an additional eps connection so i think they've kind of gone a little bit low ball on this. This is an 850 watt power supply. I would expect possibly three, if not four, of those type of connections. So possibly an additional one to run another EPS connection to your motherboard, and two individual ones for running PCI Express power to your graphics cards. I think that would have been personally preferable. That is ultimately why this power supply is where it is and why it costs what it does. So for around about 70 pounds here in the UK, you can pick this up. Don't get me wrong, absolutely fine. It's a great power supply. It's got a long heritage behind it and uh, it's served many, many people very well. I just feel that now with kind of modern PCs starting to use more power connections, especially on motherboards and graphics cards, taking uh, potentially three eight pin connectors if you're looking more towards the high end. And Lord knows what is gonna be happening with Nvidia cards when the 4000 series comes out, which are estimated to be uh, very power hungry. Obviously, We've got Intel 12th Gen, which uh, can draw a considerable amount of wattage as well. So yeah, maybe this is starting to look slightly dated in terms of connectivity options, but I think for kind of a large percentage of the market, especially the kind of uh, mid-range builders and mid to high-end builders, this is actually a really good option. It does deliver pretty much everything that most people want. Most mid-range boards, you're probably looking at just one EPS connector on your board at eight pin, there's not that many that have an additional connection. Maybe some have got an extra four, which is optional. 
Um, I've yet to actually build a system where I've needed both of those connections, but maybe you have already. But then possibly you wouldn't be looking at this power supply anyway. You might be looking at the RM model, which is anywhere between kind of 20 to 40 pounds more expensive, depending on where you're buying it and the time of buying it as well. But I feel at the moment, especially the way the markets go in, things are starting to get better with graphics cards. And it certainly does seem to be, uh, the power supply market does seem to be getting a little bit better as well. So possibly now is a good time to pounce. So I think that's going to wrap this one up. Um, overall, excellent power supply, although I would suggest if you are considering keeping it for an extended period, do kind of look towards the future. Are you going to need possibly another EPS connector for your AM5 motherboards or for your Intel 13th or 14th gen motherboards? There is that to consider it, especially when you're looking at around about 850 or 750 watts. If you're looking at 550 and 650, I think it doesn't matter as much because you're not possibly looking as future-proofing as far as the kind of warranty of this, which is seven years. But anyway, I've wittered on for way too long. Please do let me know what you think in the comments section below. There aren't that many reviews out for this particular power supply for some reason, and I don't entirely know why. I'm thinking possibly because the fact that the RM series in price is actually so close. But as I said earlier, if you can pick up the TX850M on a special offer or for a little bit of a discount, it's definitely worth looking at. But what I think isn't important, what you think is. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.